Good morning. It's Thursday, May 14th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, God with a Broken Heart, and our scripture is Genesis chapter 6. The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth, and he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. So the Lord was sorry he had ever made them and put them on the earth. It broke his heart. And the Lord said, I will wipe this human race I have created from the face of the earth. Yes, and I will destroy every living thing. All the people, the large animals, the small animals that scurry along the ground, and even the birds of the sky. I am sorry I ever made them. But Noah found favor with the Lord. Whenever I hear about Noah, the talk usually is about the ark, which, by the way, was a little smaller than the average Walmart supercenter in town. It was a triple-decker with stalls and lots of food to last a year. Or the talk is about how the animals even fit in that floating Walmart. For it might start to get theologically antagonistic, laughing over the idea of a 500-year-old man without even a backhoe or a nail gun building a boat bigger than a football field. Or complaining that God is always too harsh with that judgment thing. It's odd how we always want the discussion to either not take place at all or focus on some nitpicking details that miss or blur the main point altogether. Which begs the question, what is the main point of Noah's building project? That is the main point. It wasn't Noah's project. It was God's project. And it came out of a broken heart. There are two main thought threads that wind through every Bible passage. One is God's love, and the other is humanity's inability to grasp or accept God's love. From the beginning of Scripture, we see that God created humans and gave them the gifts of a perfect environment and the presence of God as friend, the purpose of which was that God's love always wants to bless. God's greatest desire is fellowship with his creation, us. When sin entered the picture, God forgave the human children, but we see the hideous side of sin in that a perfect God, loving perfectly, will not unring our bell of treachery. When we betray the trust of living God's way, there are consequences. From this page of scripture, there's no mistaking that the consequences begin with God's broken heart. And so that brings another question that begs answering. If God's heart is broken, why does he default to judgment in destroying all the animals and every human except Noah's family? You might as well ask, what's the meaning of life in 25 words or less, please? The short answer here has to do, as everything else in Scripture, with the love of God. The answer is the same we see in a loving mother or father wanting to save his child from a mistake that will cripple his future. When I was a teenage boy, I knew who to ask for permission. Dad was stern. Mom was soft. I always chose mom when the activity I wanted was questionable. I knew if I asked long enough and with enough whine in my voice, she would ultimately get frustrated and say, do what you want. Mom knew I was setting myself up for disappointment with my wrong choices, but there is that free will thing, and there's no teacher like experience. God's flood was more than a display of his sovereign will and power. It was the reaffirmation of the nature and character of God, who is holy, way beyond our comprehension. Humankind's downward spiral into the kind of moral pit we see in our day demanded response. And despite the pain of holy God's broken heart, his judgment fell. It fell all around that Walmart-sized boat. But the love of God kept the storm's fury outside, redeeming the servants of God inside. For you today, God always prefers blessing rather than judgment. But his gift of free will comes with a reality that choices have consequences. And really bad choices have really bad consequences, even though it breaks God's heart. In just the same but opposite way, 
The really good choice of obeying God has consequence as well. You participate in the gladdening of Father God's heart. And what true child doesn't want that? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.